Have you ever wanted to learn how you can use Lightroom Classic to take an ordinary RAW file, like the photograph that we have on the left, and then process it so that we have a unique look, color, and style? Well, that's what this movie is all about, so let's dive right in. Hello friends, my name is Chris Orwig and welcome to another episode in the series where I come to you each week and share some tips and techniques that can help you to capture and create better photographs. Well, this week we are in Lightroom Classic and we're going to work on a photograph that I captured in the subway in New York City. I love New York and so I love just walking around with the camera. And if I press F to go to full screen mode, you can see here is the original capture this is kind of a, a scene you see all the time, right? Of someone on that subway line, the train's about to arrive. And I love this moment, but the image needs a little help. So we're gonna do that. And we're gonna go to this. This will be our goal for the image to process it. So we have this really nice style and feeling and it doesn't look sort of ordinary, but we adding, we're adding color and tone and grit and a few other things as well. Well, how the heck do we do that? Well, let's start off with the raw file here in Lightroom in the develop module. I also want to talk a little bit about the photograph photographically in the sense that we have all these leading lines, which is one of the reasons why this image is working. And also I'm framing it in order to block out everyone else in the frame. There's a ton of people in the subway station, but as a photographer, I know that I need to reduce and simplify. And often when you do that, your images become stronger. Okay, well, the first thing that I'm going to do is actually jump down to my transform controls. And here, if we click on auto, what that will do is make sure the lines are straight, especially this line right here. That's really important. And you can kind of see the before and after there. It's subtle, but important. And so I want to make sure that looks good. Next up, I'm going to crop the image because I want to post and share this one on Instagram. I've talked about this before, but the aspect ratio is that four or five or eight by 10 right there. And that will give me the exact dimensions that I can use on Instagram. Now here we have a little shadow on the edge, so I'm gonna crop in to remove that. I'm also gonna bring this in, and I'm really looking at this overlay graphic we have here. Tap the O key, and you can see different overlay graphics. So if you aren't seeing the same one that I am, just keep tapping the O key to cycle through those. But essentially, I'm looking at my leading lines, my edges, how this is sort of drawing into the image. It's really about the subject sort of hiding behind this pole in a way, and then all of these lines coming into the frame there. So compositionally, I'm thinking about those things, then I will double click to apply that to the image. Well, now that we're here, one of the things I know that I wanna do is go to the effects panel, and I'm gonna darken my edges a little bit, which we'll see it more in this area, but if I just bring this in, can you see we're creating a little bit of that vignette darkening effect? and a little bit of feather there. Roundness actually looks okay. Midpoint looks okay as well. Again, just looking to add a little bit of a darkening effect. You don't want brightness near your edges. And the reason is, is that your eye will then go to those areas. You want the viewer to stay within the frame versus having to go to the outer edges. Now, speaking of that, this is bright over here. So I'm gonna darken up all of this even more. And we'll do that with a tool, which we've seen before. It's a tool which allows us to make graduated adjustments over large areas, the graduated filter. Whenever you select it, you typically want to choose an effect and it doesn't really matter which one, but just zero everything out except for that slider and then modify. So I'm going to do decrease in highlights, a little drop in exposure, and this will just be a guess, but essentially what I'm going to do is click and drag this over. And what I'm looking to try to do here is to darken that area. I'll decrease my contrast as well. And it's not a huge adjustment, but you can see how it's sort of taking down the brightness of some of those areas. And I like the mood that we're creating there with that one. Now, if ever you need to change your transition area, if you want it to be a little bit more distinct, you can just make those lines come closer together. So if I wanted to really line it up right there on that pole, that would work in that way. Now, if you need to get an area darker like this area up here, if that's still too bright, well, we might use another tool, which is very similar. This one allows us to make adjustments over an area in a specific shape. 
here. I'll just zero the values out again and decrease my highlights. And I'm just going to click and drag that out. So here we have this adjustment. And you can see essentially what I'm trying to do is just sort of darken up this part of the frame. Feather value is really high, so it's blending in nicely. And I'm just looking to drop down some of the brightness that we had on that subway sign there and the lights in the background without without darkening my subject there too much. And I think that's going to look pretty good. Okay, well, we've done all this work, and we've done this work really before anything. We've done anything with our basic controls, our tone curve, anything with color. And one of the reasons why I wanted to do that here was just to tackle some of those issues first and then move to the others. Now, a couple other things I want to do is I need to clean up this little receipt or piece of trash that's on the ground. So we'll use our spot healing tool, tap the left bracket key to make the brush nice and small, and then just click and drag over anything that you feel is a little bit distracting. Now, in this case, all it is is about reducing and simplifying so that the viewer is really drawn into the frame. Let me zoom in here to talk about removing this element, it's probably her backpack or something. But if I hover over that and then tap the H key, you can see I have my overlay graphics there. If those aren't lined up perfectly, it won't work very well. So you can see here it's not lined up very well. But if you press the forward slash key, it will keep searching to try to find a better spot or good alignment. In this case, it does a pretty good job. Tap the H key to hide that. If you realize when I tap the H key, it wasn't perfectly lined up, you can always move that around. Tap the H key multiple times to show and hide that overlay graphic. Okay, great. Well, that's looking kind of cool. Next thing that I want to do is work on the color. And there's lots of ways that we can modify the color in this image, but let's just look at, let's do two. We'll do split toning and tone curve. So in split toning, we can add some color into our shadows. Now we could go with kind of a blue, blue tone. That that would be a really fun way to process this image where we have these sort of blue tones here. Maybe in our highlights, we're going to bring in a little bit of yellow as well. And that's a really viable kind of fun way to process the image. Now, once you do your color, you're going to want to go into your basic control and sort of add that final snap to it, right? And make sure that you're, you know, dialing in that look with the brightness values that you're interested in. And what I also like to do is go to my tone curve panel and in the tone curve for RGB, I, I think it's because I use Photoshop, but I almost always just like adding a little bit of an S curve here. And so you can see it just will add this little snap. And then if you need to modify color even further, go into a channel like you could go into the blue channel here. And in my shadows, if I click and drag this up, I could make those shadows more blue or drag this to the right, more yellow. Or another option might be to go to the red channel and here drag up, it becomes more red or drag to the right, a little more cyan in there, which I think is actually kind of fun. So with all of this, you can see how we customize the color look in the photograph, but you may remember from the beginning of this movie, this doesn't look anything at all like the before and after photos that I showed you. And the reason why I wanted to show you this was just to illustrate that sometimes when you're creating color, you will come up with a color option like this, but then decide you want to try something else. One of the ways you can do that is to right click or control click on the thumbnail, then choose create virtual copy. In that way, you can have two different versions of the same image. Like one here, we have these cooler tones. Well then let's go through that process and see if we can't look at warming this one up as well. So back to the split toning, let's just remove all these values altogether here. We'll just take those off for a moment. Tone curve, one of the things that you can do in tone curve is right click and choose flatten curve. So if you have a curve there, you can see how that's all flattened out and RGB composite, right click, flatten curve, no adjustments there, great. So what we can do back in our split toning controls is rather than making those shadows blue, let's make them a little bit red. So here I'm just going to leave my hue slider actually right where it is because that's where red is. And I'm going to drag that up. I'm going to bring in a little bit of that warmth, which is pretty fun. Highlights, I'll bring over to my yellows. And you know, I actually just, I happen to know where those are. But if you don't, here is an awesome trick for you. Hold down the Option key on a Mac, Alt on Windows, and drag your slider around for highlights or shadows. And that will show you the color at 100% intensity 
or 100% saturation. When you let go of option or alt, it will go back to whatever the slider is. So in this way, we can just sort of find the right color. Like, do we want a, gr a greenish yellow, an orangish yellow, or just maybe yellow, yellow? <laughs> so let's, let's uh, choose that option there. Then bring up our yellows a little bit in this way. And you can see how now we have this interesting kind of warmer color palette to the image. And often I like to experiment with different controls because sometimes just by closing a control like that, then moving on to another like tone curve, what can happen is it can just free you up to experiment in a different way. So here in the red channel, we have our shadows points. I'm going to click and drag the shadow point up. Look how all the deep darks tones are becoming red. That's too much, but if I just do a little bit more of that, kind of dig in that. I know another thing we can do is go to the blue channel. Now here's our shadow point. That's our highlight point. So if I drag this to the left, that's gonna the highlights will become more blue. You see those? The brighter tones are bluer. If I drag this down, they take on a little more yellow, which is kind of fun there as well. Now, once we've done those adjustments, you can kind of see that before and after. You also might want to go to the RGB composite. I'm a sucker for adding S-curves. What I mean by that is I just love adding them. I love the little snap. I love contrast. I love how uh, it just helps to kind of make that image come to life a little bit. And then, of course, we saw earlier I did some work in the basic panel. And then I kind of flew through those sliders, but a little bit of increase in brightness so we could change the look. Contrast, sometimes having low contrast can be really fun and then you can darken your blacks increase the clarity so it can give in this case i feel like a really fun sort of mood you don't always have to do that in other ways you can accomplish looks is boosting your blacks and having the high contrast that gives deeper richer more saturated colors so really it depends on the look you're going for and really fine tuning this and doing this at this stage once we have all of those colors dialed in, because here we can start to really see how that will appear. And we could also, I think right about there is good. We could also, sorry, I was got lost in my processing. We can also go back to our other color adjustments. And I, I guess why I was hesitating there is as I'm looking at the image, I'm feeling like maybe, you know what, maybe this is a little bit too red over here. And so, if you have that gut instinct, we'll go back. Either split toning, we can say, let's drop some of those reds back or just decrease them just a touch like that. And I think that's pretty cool. Now, the great thing about this is because we have these two different versions of the photograph where we were creatively exploring different color ideas, we now <clears throat> have this ability to get really creative, right? Because you can see how both of these images tell very different stories, have very different moods and feelings. And what's great about that is it can help you to grow creatively as you work in Lightroom. So virtual copies are one of my favorite things in the world. And if I had more time, I would create three more virtual copies. And that's typically what I do in my own workflow. All right, well, for this week's episode though, that is a wrap. And I hope you picked up some valuable tips and techniques. And as always, thanks so much for joining me in these tutorials. I love making them. I hope that you're enjoying them. I'd love to hear from you if you have any feedback or thoughts. And last but not least, have a fantastic rest of your day.